Good morning, and welcome back to the bird room. We're actually in uh, what I would call my new bird room, the, the stock uh, shed for all the young ones. But today, we're not going to be filming in the bird room. Um, we are filming today in uh, a good friend to the channel, Chris Harrison. Um, Chris has been a real supporter of our channel since we started it. Um, I've been to his, um, his place and done some some filming with his red poles and he's having a phenomenal year. If I have to describe Chris in a couple of words it would be hard working family man. Um, anyone that knows Chris will tell you that as well. Take into consideration the, the sounding um, in this recording will be slightly different to what it would be in my bird room uh, using a different type of microphone because obviously there's going to be two people in the room, not just one, so um, I want to capture the sound from both of us, not just from me. So I'm not sure what the quality of sound is going to turn out like, but it's well worth a watch. And uh, I can only apologise if it doesn't turn out as well as I wanted it to, Chris. But um, hopefully it turns out alright and it does you justice. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, enjoy. Um, the episode at Chris's and I will see you in the next one back in the bird room um, some more shots for in here and see what progress we've made throughout the season so far Hello everybody welcome back to the bird room today we're at Chris's Chris Harrison a good friend of mine as I said in the intro um, Chris mainly keeps red poles uh, so we're going to be taking a look at them shortly but first I just want to now, are you going to birds? How your life with birds? What made you come about with your birds? Well, really, nobody I know, family-wise, has got birds. No. So what it was is I had an old gentleman's vintage wardrobe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I've seen a picture yeah. of this. Yeah. And I converted that and started out with some zebs. I've always been into British bird wildlife-wise, but yeah, it's got a couple of zebs, cheats, and they bred like mice. Yeah, as, as they do, as they yeah. do, yeah. And uh, then I moved on to canaries, and then it's the red poles. Somebody I know quite local, he has got some top quality birds. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I got a few off him, and then that's where it all sort of started. Yeah, I see mainly in here is quite a few mutations, yeah. so but we'll, we'll take a look and explain them shortly. But it seems interesting that none of your family. No, no, no one. Um, because of, with me, obviously, with my family background, we're having birds, so quite interesting yeah, that, that, yeah, you just I come about not, it that way. I didn't even have friends as such, do you know what I mean, with birds. It was, mm. I, and like the only reason I know you and the older guys I know through the birds is literally from what I've met at shows or spoke to online or whatever. Interesting, but, yeah. The red poles always stood out to me. Um, I, well, I tried my hand with, I did, I had a lot of siskins at one point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Red poles are a bit easier, aren't they? Yeah, they are a lot easier than siskins. I had goldies, but yeah, I can't get on with them. Why is that? Because they're just dead. <laughs> <laughs> it is constantly. I've said it many a times. But you have got a goldfinch, which we'll show you shortly, um, as a mule in pair, so... Yeah. Hopefully you'll get some out of them. Yeah, fingers crossed. She's sat tight on a few, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it is. There's some lovely birds in here. And like I've said to you off camera, that there's a couple in here you need to get showing them. Yeah, because exactly. they are some quality red poles, so... I like uh, the pied, though. The pied's the bird for me. Um, I've got... Uh, hence why you've got quite a few pairs of Yeah, them. I do like the pied. I do prefer the darker bird. Um, the darker pied bird. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the cinnamon. No, at all. Why is that? I don't know, they just don't really stand out to me. They haven't got... They're not visually looking at the cinnamon. They don't carry it like an A-gate. It's, it's a vari variation of a feather or a colour that run through the bed. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the, co the, the cinnamon seems to be a bit plain. Yeah, but you need that cinnamon sometimes to put the feather quality back yeah. on. Yes, so. definitely. I have got some, and I've got yeah. some cracking yeah. ones. Um, but it's been... It's been a good start in many ways. Yeah, 30 young ones so far, isn't it? Yeah, and it's yard plus the two behind me right here. Yeah, yeah. being fed by the fair and style, so. But it's probably some downs as well. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, uh, from what I've been talking to other people, though, um, you're probably having the best start to oh, I anyone have, I know yeah. with the British Poles, especially the Red Poles. I have had a good start. I have had a good start. Mm. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it carries on. Yeah. What's your aim for this year? 
Is it to breed more the mutation side or show quality birds or just breed what you can out of them? Well, what I want to do is I've tried a few different things that, because I'm still obviously very new, it's understanding mutation. So how many, how many years have you had birds then? This will be my fourth year. Is that all? Yeah. So, no, yeah. sorry, this is my, yeah, so this is my third proper season, really, right. with birds. I had, I come late in, so I missed the third season and I had the Zed. Mm. So this is my third actual proper season. Well, my second season. Exceptionally well yeah. then. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, my aim really is, is to get a decent line of splits and pies mm. so I can run my own. Right, right. Uh, and definitely for the show. Uh, the thing is with the showing, it's great, but there's not a lot of pied red poles out to show against. No, and I think the, the problem with that is you need to do a, a specialist show. Yeah, definitely. Um, but as anyone that shows birds knows that nine times out of ten, any mutation bird doesn't take the top prize. No. It's a normal, which is definitely wrong in some of because, I mean, if you look at some of the, um, the red poles that's in here, it's perfectly marked 50 50 as it should be for the show standards. But like you said, you're developing a line, so that's you know, the plan. Do you know what I mean? Uh, well, we're 30 from the first round, yeah. uh, and like you said, some of them are not even on the first round, yet yeah. you've had some clears, so yeah, it's uh, absolutely fantastic so far. But there's no better, is there? Than coming in no, no. Yeah, well, that's the other thing, you're a family man, so yeah. I'll give it to you because you know as well as I do, working is not nine till five no. outside of a job. So, to be fair, my my lot of good as gold. They understand, they know the drill, they know this kind of year. Yeah, it's, it's, it is, it's hard, isn't it? Because you're in at five in the morning, yep. then you're back in at when you finish work till six, seven o'clock some night time in here. And then obviously then once you start when all the ringing comes in, then it's starts yeah, again. Yeah, so you've it? got some sort of ring, did you say? Yeah, I have got some to ring. So, two nests to ring good luck to that. Good job you've got small hands like yeah. me. Because <laughs> the red poles have got small feet, so... They don't, they, to be fair, I, they're not too bad. It's what the only thing is with the poles I've found is that sometimes, like, we've got, I said to you earlier, we've got one down there that wants to ring it. It's due to be wrong today. Yeah. But there's no way I'm ringing that. They're not old enough. No, no, no they're, they're old enough, but they're, they're not, not big enough. Yeah. But she's got a nest, it is a nest of five. Yep. But the cock and head are feeding in there, so, but they're not ready. So it's, sometimes you, you put as much data to a sheet as you like and it doesn't work. Exactly that, yeah, we can only work with what we've got at that point, so. But we're getting there, mate. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, what we're going to do shortly, I'll take some shots. Obviously the feeling right behind me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, of Chris's bird room. Now, this is quite a new bird room. I've followed the progress of this bird room since Chris has been doing it. And it just shows you don't need a big setup to breed a lot of good birds. I mean, this is big by any stretch compared to some places, no. but it fits it's perfectly. Fits in. I mean, how many kids are on this? There's 24 on that back. on this back wall. Yeah. And and you're running your red poles in there. Well, you call a double feeder, but they're not actually. They're a lot deeper, aren't they? So yeah, there's plenty of room for the birds yeah. to to nest successfully yeah. and and go for a second round. So we'll, we'll have a look at that shortly. And uh, speak yeah, to more about this. The idea cages is more so that it was deep enough for if I had to split then they still had a good length of flight yeah, yeah. and they can all open up. Well, especially red poles, they, they need the exercise yeah. on it, so they're not ideal very bad, they're not ideal really. really. They are quite a lively bunch, but that was the idea with them. Mm. And then, it's sort of, do you know when you start from that, and everything goes a bit too far? Yeah. <laughs> That's sort of how it happens. It is, but it's like I said to you before, just do it once and do it the first yeah. time as you want it. Um, and for me, I wouldn't change anything about this place. Um, the, the way you've got it set out is brilliantly. Um, for like conditioning your birds, we'll start with them. We'll run through um, like a yearly program of what type of seed or what feed you give them through the various points of year. So we'll start with conditioning. Um, when do you start conditioning and what do you use? Oh, I start mine not too long after Christmas, to be honest. Okay. Right. I'd see, I'd see, so conditioning will start with 
I'll start giving them the green. Red is what, what green broccoli, broccoli is, spinach, what and peas. Yeah, yeah. I used to blend all my food up. Yes. We had the conversation. Well, yes, I used to blend it up every single morning fresh. Yeah. But like yourself, I'm out there, sometimes I'm out 8 hours, sometimes I'm out 14. Yeah. And it don't, it don't, it don't kick. No, it, it don't kick for 4 hours, never it. mind it. Yeah, yeah, it does. So I stopped doing that and I give them it straight off the, off the leaf or whatever it comes out. Um, and the benefits of that would be, obviously, they've, they've got more activity rather exactly. than just sat at a seed pot, exactly. pecking away at what they're... I mean, they can carry the bits of broccoli up and stuff like that and, and keep them active, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And, and then also, then what I do is, I can then, throughout the week, rather than giving them everything in one bowl, yeah. I can give them it gradually. And various. Yeah, and, yeah. and then they take, I think they seem to take more off like a chunk of broccoli yeah, or yeah. a bit of peas or and spinach together rather than it all in one. Mm. So that's that's that all starts in then. The mealies, I get a mini mealies, that's the only live food they have. I don't yeah. do any frozen food. No, why is that? Because you I spoke to you before about yeah. pinkies and you said you don't use them. Do you I don't so? like them. I don't like I don't like the idea of defrosting something. Yeah. Um and then letting it fall through and leaving it. Yeah. If it's been Couldn't frozen one. Bacteria wise. Yeah. yeah. So you give them just um, mini meal worms. Mini meal worms. Yeah. Or right, standard if I if I can't. Just regulars. Yeah. yeah. And what do you give them in a an egg dish like this? Yeah. yeah. So they have it. And they have egg, so egg biscuit every morning, which I mix up with a special sweet tea. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got some somewhere, but yeah, I don't know where you put it. It's yeah. Out there. We have. Uh, so I mix that in as like three to one ratio with uh, mealies. I just put pinch mealies straight on top of them. Yeah. And to be honest with you. They don't last more than five minutes in there anyway. We've got they can have six, seven meters in there each, and they'll go straight away. That's the yep. first thing they eat. Um, then the soak seed, soak seed starts. Is this still part of your conditioning? Yeah. So, so that, that's similar to what I do. I don't feed conditioning seed. I'll, I'll use a, the soak seed yep. as the conditioner because it's very much similar to what um, is in the context of uh, conditioning seed anyway, except for the linseed, isn't it? So, yeah, um, and I think same as you, there's probably more vitamins and minerals in a salt seed uh, some they start to chip than what there is dry seed. That's it, and also with the dry seed, because they've been they've spent that winter period on that dry seed, they want to change. So that's it. So if you give them that, you're putting that moisture in, it's changing it all, they're changing the diet up a bit for them, and it's bringing them into that stage. Mm -hmm. and then I don't really go out doing too much wild food. So as soon as the dandelions are out, we get them. Yeah, I love them. They yeah. have them straight away. And then that sort of then. It's the same process for me, so all the food will stay the same all the way through breeding and mould. Right. I'll just obviously vary it up and vary it down. So obviously now we're in peak of it, they get everything fresh every single day. So you, you're giving them uh, broccoli, there's broccoli in there, um, in one egg dish, and you've got um, your soak seed in the small dishes yeah, so with a, um, a dried egg food. A dry egg food, which is dry egg food will have grit, charcoal, and that's it. Oh, right, right. All, mix all mixed in together. Yeah. Right. Because I used to use the finger drawers. But, yeah. No, but it's just... There's not enough in there. No. And as soon as you put them in the bars, everyone knows. They go everywhere. Yeah. So uh, what egg food are you using? I'm using just a uh, super blend at the minute, I think. Right, so you're not using the kings that I've got yet. No. <laughs> somebody was supposed to bring me some today. I know, well no. <laughs> I just forgot I was too busy loading everything else. Nah, that's why. Right. Um, yeah, so they get just any dry egg biscuits, you know, I'm not too fussy on that, and they get a uh, red pulse seed from right. yourself. Yep, um, yep. To be fair, there isn't much I don't get from you here. I know, we'll, we'll show that later on because I can see more things in here yeah, from us. So. Yep. And, and anyone that obviously knows Chris knows he's a uh, avid supporter of my channel, so thanks for that Chris. No, and it's good mate. He, good. he has actually come and helped me do my office, um, spent a day up there and he got more done in that day with me that I would have done in a week. So he's a man of obviously many talents with his hands. Right. So but so um as we are in breeding season now, do you not change anything with um your feed pattern for the chicks when you've winged them or do you just give them the same mix what you've been giving them? They're exactly the same. Because right. I find if I was to change it because they're then out of the cage with the parents. Mm. One, it's changed as it is for them anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, to change, I even try and keep things similar places. And simple. Yeah. Yeah. The more you complicate it, the harder it is. Yeah, definitely. If I've, if I've got 24 nests in here, which 
let's just say on that back bank, we've got 24 nests. That's 24 different things that are going on. No, no two nests are the same. That's right, yeah. Every so, bird's individual, so... So if I'm doing the same thing on a regular feeding routine, nobody's missing out. Yeah. And it's the same thing when I put them in there. The last thing you want to do, because I'm always a paranoid wreck when it comes to weaning anyway. Yeah. Because it's... Is it I too think soon? that's, that's bird keepers though. I think that's... Oh, that's I'm a too soon. And then I've got, like we were saying earlier, I've got the hen in there sat on four eggs. She's still got the chicks in there. Yeah. I've not seen them feeding yet, but they must be. Because the cock bird's definitely not feeding. Yeah, and they're growing, so... And they're growing. Yeah. So now it's, I'm at that stage where it's like, really they want to be out there. Mm. And am I doing my bad, leaving them in there? Or like, do you know what you question yourself? Yeah, yeah you? there's, there's no wrong or right about it, is there? Because, no. like I said, they're, they're feeding somehow, um, but we just don't know. And I, I mean, I've had birds a lot longer than you, as everyone knows, but I'm still the same now. I'll go back home and... They're wondering should I be taking these chicks out now or yeah. do I leave them a couple more days and I'm the one that usually does that just leave them a couple more days yeah, I am and then a couple more days later you think oh, I'll leave it a couple more days when in fact they're way past what they yeah. should be but I, I think that's that's us as good bird keepers because we're not in a rush to to get the next ones out we'll yeah. let them take the course as where it is but anyone who knows where pulls knows that they're um, hatch a lot quicker wheel a lot faster yeah. than, than Canaries, yeah, green finches, or other British hard though. So, um, they're a quick turnaround bird, and you could end up with how many? How many? What are you aiming for this year? I, I, to be honest with you, I haven't got numbers. No? I, I no. genuinely haven't, and the reason I haven't is because I don't want numbers. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Numbers, alright, you can get rid of them, it's not a point of that. Mm. Um, it's more a case if I want the shape and size of yeah. these type birds that. I haven't really seen. Yeah. I know I know one of the lads who's got he's got up there with it something about he's got the best hides I've seen. Um, Who was that your name? Is? James Fish. <laughs> it rings a bell, but I'm not <laughs> he's sure. got he's cracking, he's a right. really bloke, he's helped yeah. out a lot. Um, and he's got some top quality stamp birds for for a pie bird. On your pies though, I mean I've seen uh, just behind us uh, there is um, the weaning cage up here. How many normals are there from um, from a normal pair? Because a lot of them are throwing yes. different mutations, aren't they? I've got that normal pair up there, which is thrown me agates, cinnamons. There's one we were speaking about that's either an Isabel or a Feo or yeah. a pastel, whatever it is. Like you won't know, will you? Yeah. So. Um, that's got it's got normals in there, and it had a pie that I lost, mm. and that was from what should be a normal pair. A normal pair. Yeah. They look a normal pair. They but it, it's like any. I said to you though. That seeing them in a nest of different colours in oh, there, brilliant. there's nothing better, is there? No. Same with me with the canaries, like I explained to you. Um, from what I'm breeding, and then we're getting cinnamons and fawns. It's yeah, even it's from day one though, when you see them, and the two or three of them have the red eye. Yeah, you're like, you know there's something so, there. Yeah, so it's yeah. going, and, yeah. then, and then it starts feathering up, and it does. It changes it for you, doesn't it? It does, mm. it, does. it makes it a lot more interesting. But then it also makes it twice as hard. <laughs> Because you're trying to figure out what's yeah. what's happened or where where they come from. from. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Well, on these cages, as you can see, but you're using the external um, wire ones that obviously I know they're from me with Christmas tree round. Why is that? And and obviously, what's inside is the the size of liners from yes. themselves as well. Why have you gone for them this year? Is it have you used these all the time no. or this type of stuff? I yeah last year I run a few different things to see what worked best. So last year in the old shed I had half the shed cages and the other half and I split them and did two different things. Right. I did two different feeds and I did two different nest pans. Uh, sorry, three different. So I did the wicker, the sizal and the grass liners. Yeah. None of them nested in the grass liners. No? No, they all choose the internal mounted wire pans with um, cocoa in over the grass. So not, I didn't have one nest in the, not even built up. Really? See, when I had the red poles, they only... <coughs> no, actually, I only could get the grass liner at that point, and they all use them. No, I didn't. Out of preference, none of them used them. Right, right. And I had half, this, half of them was the fake Christmas tree and half natural. Yep. Within two weeks, the natural was just twigs. Yeah, that's what happens, what, well, 21st? Off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then the cover of the nest went done, so now I find myself spending another two, three hours redoing all the nests yeah. again. 
Um, so what did you have more success in then? This, exactly what Right, right, so this is what you're yeah, going to be so doing. So I only ever use now the cocoa or the sizeal. Right, yeah, because I know there's a cocoa one yeah. in here. Majority of them are sizeal. Yeah. And majority of them have either got eggs or chicks in, so yeah. that says everything, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah. and that bit of cover on there offers that bit of security and, and cover to, to let them go about the yeah. business in the way that they are. Because I'm in and out a lot as well, it's less bright, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's not starting as much. Although, to be fair, they're not too bad these lot. They're not, actually. I mean, we could hear of birds or the chicks being fed as we're actually still right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they are good, like. They are good, as in. But then again, I suppose it's the same when you're spending so much time in something. Mm. You do spend a lot of time in, in the room, don't you? And it, it, we it do, we, we spend you know, more time in the room than yeah. what we do in the house. Yeah, I do, um, and that's what we say earlier. Yeah. Family, really. My wife knows where I am. Yeah, I'm not down at the pub, so. Exactly. But it's, I suppose it's trial and error, even now, still, it's just trial and error. Mm. Um, I've had, a, I've had a few downs with the cock have been a bit of a problem this year. Yes, as you said, the, what, they've been chirping chicks out. Yeah, eggs, I think chicks, that's, yeah, I mean... Driving hens, I've got a couple of hens as Was old it meant to be younger ones or older ones? A very, do not really matter. Really? Yeah, don't really matter. So I've got two, three-year-old cocks that are just as bad as... Current year ones. Yeah, current year birds, yeah. And what do you think causes that? I don't know. But to be honest with you, the only thing I can say is... I've used something this year that I've never used before. And it's new from AV4. Right. That first 12. Right, yeah, yeah. And every time I put that in, it's like I'm giving them 30 bit. Right, so. Oh, 30 bit, I won't use 30 bit. Yeah, that. so the, the thing is, uh, I, I've explained this on my channel before. If you give them 30 bit, the cocks give it to once or twice a year. Otherwise, what's going to happen is they're driving too far, it's going to make them too much in condition. Yeah. The, the ends on the other hand, you can give it them all day long and it yeah. won't affect them the same way. It's like testosterone, give a, a child steroids, the testosterone is going to peak faster yeah. than what an adult would. But then how do you split that over a double case? Exactly, this is this is the problem. So um, I I would say it's down to a certain product, yeah. giving them too much. Um, but, or do we know? That's it, you can, you can only help what? Yeah, but I try and... Yeah. No oh, sign there. There's, there's not, there's not. There's that many sheep feeding like a trooper in there. Yeah. A mouth full of. No, it looks like it's not fish, isn't it? Have a look Mmm, very interesting. Do you find then, um, they seem to take a lot of um, egg food? Because I know some breeders don't feed their red poles egg food and they don't give them peas because they want such a peas. Some mine people will say they just soak it alone would do it. No, mine do. I, to be fair, I think it's what you have. So what you introduce and how quick you introduce it and whether you persevere with it. Yeah, so give them the time. Yeah, yeah, perseverance. But the egg food, since I started, mine take dry egg food anyway. Yes. Um, and I used to originally knock up a bit of colour food in with it. Mm. But I don't bother with that anymore. Um, but since I put that seed in, they take every last bit. What the, the mix? Yeah, from me. that right. makes seeds. That's See, good. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's the same sort of thing. It's variety again. Isn't it, it is, it's yeah. Not just a plain we don't want the same thing every no. time. So let's try and get some shots of these young ones while they're feeding. About the bird room now, um, how many bird rooms have you had since you've kept birds? How two. many different ones? Two. Two, two. two yeah. Two. I've changed the two over the period, but this is where I'm at now. And this is going to be... Yeah, this is it. This is yeah. the one. Well, that's all you need. So, tell us about, obviously, the building process of building it, because um, I know, obviously, you've done everything yourself in here. Plastered and all the electrics and amenities. You've got a sink over here. Um, and you've got LED strips in here that are dimmable for your phone, right? Yes. So talk to us about the cage size that you've got first. So the cage is, these are all built up. That's a new parent, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely after her. Uh, so the cage is, these are all, it's M, uh, plywood, just WB plies, which is a, a marine ply. Yeah. Um, which I, it was all, sort of fathoms from the size of the shed more than anything else. Yeah, yeah, because it fits perfectly. You've still got a load of room in here, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. So I built, the shed layout was to the size that it could fit in the garden. The what size is this thing? This is 4.8 by... Oh, so you give me input, right. I would have said foot. How many feet is oh, it? Oh, I don't know, foot, I don't wait for it. 4.8 metres yeah. by 2.8, I think. Okay, yeah. Um, with ease. The roof height of 2.4 mm. front and 
then the cages on the back wall were built to suit the length. Yeah. And the depth of the cages is just over half a metre, so the 600 mil. Mm -hmm. Which the reason I did that was because it's half a sheet. Yeah. Easier to exactly. to to build and and get them done quick. And it was the depth that I wanted. And you wanted to spray the um. Yeah. So yeah, I remember you spraying it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Getting spray everywhere. Yeah. So. Uh, I did put no insulation in it. No. Because I did in my last shed, which became a nightmare for me. You could hear my scuttling everywhere. Right. Um, and also, in my last shed, it got far too hot in there in the summer. Mm. And because I was using rock wall insulation, it was just too much. I was yeah. forever trying to cool the shed down. So Perfect. I never insulated the walls. Perfectly. I mean, it's quite warm outside and it's nice and cool. Yeah. It's quite shaded. Yeah, it is shaded. Yeah, definitely. And then it's just plastered. I did all the face bits electric. Um, put double sockets. Probably far too many in. Yeah, so we spoke about that. <laughs> yeah. But if once they're there, they're there, aren't they? They are. You, you can always have too many. Yeah. You can never have too little, can you? So. And then with the lighting, I uh, I used to run um, cabinet lighting, mm -hmm. uh, which was great, but it was a lot of cables. Right. Uh, yeah, and I, you can't even see the cables. No. So no. Things hidden, so. so it's all it's, it's all the lighting rigs on one on one link now. Right. Um, which is on uh, a modem, a uh, programmable modem, which works for an app on my phone. Mm. Uh, so they dim down, dim up, uh, and they set on schedules every day. So you can do it. From sitting in bed, I can. But yeah. it's, it's on a program schedule anyway, so right. I don't really exactly. have to so do it. So, anything. so until I'm changing time, bringing them on up, so it takes up more. Yeah, which I normally try and stick to natural, or if anything, I cut it a little bit shorter than natural, mm -hmm. so it's not pulling down. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, to be fair, when they dim down anyway, they don't really do it, so they'll dim down over an hour. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I'm definitely going to have to invest in some of these because um, when you work it out as well, the cost the cost is yeah, yeah compared to what you spend on other stuff, it's just it's just less of an headache. You ain't got to worry. Yeah, and even everything I try and do everything now as remotely as possible, even like the air purifier and yeah, it's all remote now. The way forward, it is it's technology, easy. isn't it? So yeah, it's, it's, and I'm it's, terrible with it. <laughs> you can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, I am terrible, but you can figure it out, and it, it just comes a bit easier. And then the cages was um, I just put all standard fronts on. And mine. Yeah, it's all what you made yourself. So yeah, and then just shows your quality of work, really. Well, it's just I suppose, especially with time and you know what it's like. Everything gets on top of you, doesn't it? And then you're out here at eight, nine o'clock at night trying to put cages together. It yeah. yeah. But I wanted it to be. Where I oh, could open it up, so yeah, yeah, everything's easy enough, so it's easy clean as well. So I can come split it off. I really want to have a deep clean in here for whatever reason. The cages are too bad. I can section it. I can section it. Yeah, because you could open these out completely. Yeah, so I'm open up into one big, well, four big flights. Yeah. Um, worst case, I'm overrun and I can't put anything outside in it. That's the other thing. You've also got flights outside. Yeah. I mean, is it four, five, five, six out six there? Six out there with. Green finches, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair and an absolute stunning pair of five green finches there. Yeah, so, and yeah. and the few young greenies out there as well. It's yeah. not just not just red poles in here. There is green finches. Yeah, there is. Oh, why is green finches? Well, somebody uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but to be fair, I love them. They are lovely birds. Yeah, I've never. I, I think I let, I struggle with them in cages. Yeah, I think I think what you've done out there, and they open up yeah, they to same. one big flight, don't yeah. they? So, um, again. Well thought out, well planned. That's just trial and that's from being in well, these situations where you've been yeah. up with 20 wire cages all toppling over. No, it is. I mean, it, it comes, it's doesn't definitely it? well thought because it's like I was saying, how many, how many have you had to uh, to learn you're along the way because I'm letting it off, how many times I've had to redo mine because I weren't happy with it. Um, well, that's what I did though, Shane. Over that period of time, I went through and I had that shed out. I put cages in, I yeah. made all wooden cages, yeah. I, was, I was even to the point where I was selling wooden cages and I was selling back. Really? Yeah, we was doing that and I was doing all lighting rigs and I, there were certain things I was doing, even like with the drawers, I'd never have drawers again. No, I've, I've, majority of mine, the ones I've made, um, no drawers in there, I, I just, I don't feel the need for more places for my to hide, it you is. get my, and simplicity when you're building something, in my opinion, think of it long term. Yeah, like, do it first time, do it right first time, and... Don't get me wrong, we've got, I've got white cages as Yeah, well. but they're, they're different, for a different thing, different, yeah, they're for, yeah, they're for young ones, and... Yeah, they're good white cages, to be fair, yeah. I mean... And 
obviously you've got young red poles up there yeah well, like i said of various mutations so yeah looking forward to seeing what they like at the end of the yeah, season yeah i am i am i am definitely I and am. how many you get because uh from the people i've been speaking to they're really struggling with any british bird this time of year i mean like i said to you earlier that mine um with the green finches and brambles and all you're really just getting going now so you're doing something right well we i've got greenies out there that have not not even entertained a bit of drop and nesting in this area yet. Pied, for instance. Yeah, the pied, yeah, and I've yeah. got another pair. One pair that I haven't had paired up too long, but even then, I lost the hen, didn't I? Which mm. was, luckily enough, the chicks was yeah. feeding. Yeah. So then I've managed to keep, I only lost one of the chicks. The goldfinch feeding the canary over there, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's good as gold, he is. And he took the wood, he probably didn't say it, but he's five in there. And, and he's not pecked them. It's hard to do it for you because yeah. I, I, I would have had them out already if it was in my shape, put it that way. But I've kept an, but it, then I, when I spoke to you last, she remember she had the she had her own fights, which yeah. were in here. That's right. So and you've already had some young ones out. I her. took the cock bird out of there and put him in when he was when this chicks were in there. That's what I said yeah. to introduce him, and yeah. and it worked. It Obviously, worked it's bonded. It's bonded really well. And he well. was feeding chicks. Yeah. So, and the chicks were fledged. You know, well, I've said this a few times, goldfinches make brilliant feeders. Mm -hmm. Can you get them to the point of having chicks in there without disturbing eggs too much? And, and they will bring up any chicks. Uh, and should he not smash the eggs? I, I think that they will be full. By looking at them now, I think they will be full. Yeah. Well, let's hope so. Let's yep. hope so. Time will tell. It will. Now we're going to look at obviously some of the uh, the flights that Chris has got here. Six in here. First flight we've just got um, spare cockbirds. Spare it? cockbirds, yeah, yeah. Second flight is what the uh, what would you call them sparrows? Give them. Some of you, that. That one about that bird. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pair of normals. Green, yeah. Green finch normals. Nothing from them yet, now. Nothing from them. She's actually fair. I need to say couple of weeks ago yeah so there's them pair we've got so also with what's this pair a this normal cock bird yeah and a, a pied egg yes beautiful cock bird that one yeah you can get some out of him anyway well she had a clutch um, and then I had to move her yeah. so uh, they got left but they was clear anyway interesting you've got no cover in these have you no, no. Why they need to do. so I did have cover on two different nest sites yeah, and, and they wouldn't then entertain them. them. Yeah. No. So I took them out um, and tried to just declutter it a bit. Yes. Yeah. Although the end flight, they're the young, young, young. They're not yeah. too steady, but they're, they're quite steady, really, yeah. for what they are. Um, the next one is a brilliant pair. Yeah. yeah. Really, really nice pair. A nice, uh, was the uh, top bird in yellow at the yes. end of the book. Another good pair. And in the uh, next flight down is. Normals, a pair of normals yeah, again. Good normals, no, nothing out of them yet. Yes, they had um, a round, right? A run, uh, and she left. Right, I mean, the last fight is just the young ones. Yeah. Um, interestingly, the thing about these, all these petitions pull out to open up completely, don't they? Yes. So I could see these as a uh, good uh, real and hybrid. Yeah. Flights for next year, maybe. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I think you'll get a bug after the uh, Goldie Mills put out. That's going to be it for today. I just want to thank Chris for having me round, and uh, I'm sure maybe towards the end of the season we'll come back and see how yeah, he's got. Always oh, welcome here. And um, hopefully we'll get some uh, young mules and plenty of green finches. I mean, no doubt you're going to be adding plenty of eggs from what I can see now, and you know, all the nests of chicks and eggs that's uh, around here. So, now thanks very much for having me. You're very welcome, mate. And uh, yes, um, any questions? Don't forward them to me, forward them to Chris. He, he seems to know what he's doing with the red poles anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you soon.